Hello. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Bert. This is... Past story time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, then. We're going to do a um, October wrap-up. Um, Sean has read way more books than I have, hey. so she's going to take the lead. Um, so, yeah. Just to get it out of the way, we've already done a video on this. Um, we read Fools by Pat Cadigan. We read this for the My So Called Book Club, 90s Book Club. Um, and yeah, we uh, had differing uh, takes on it, <laughs> let's say. I loved it. Sean thought it was okay. We were All both right. confused by it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you want to like the video. Yeah, if you yeah. want to watch more about it, then yeah, uh, watch the video. Um, we have also in that video announced the next '90s book club read. Yeah. So if you want to read along, if you like the look of it, please do. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did read it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I read Watch Over Me by Nina Lacour, which I bloody read with Cats from Biblia Obscura. I really love Nina Lacour's writing style. It's a young adult novel, and it kind of has a little bit of ghosts in it, which is why I think a few people have read it kind of over October. Um, she, I think Nina Lacour just writes beautifully and has really good characters and um, really write, writes about grief and loneliness really well, and she does that all um, here as well. Um, I probably would have given it five stars if I was just reading it on my own, mm. but I feel like Cat brought me down to earth a little bit right. <laughs> and was kind of like, what about those bits? And is it, yeah. So it's a little bit that kind of, I think um, we watched Mercedes' video her wrap up and she was talking about this some stuff in there which is kind of just there to make it a bit weirder or a bit creepier right. to create this kind of, so yeah. it does have this kind of creepiness mm -hmm. going through it but then in the end it kind of they they don't make 100 percent sense i feel mm -hmm. but i really love loved it anyway yeah and... i loved the um previous one yes yeah, we, are we are okay, okay yeah. i don't think it's as good as we're okay yeah. but still yeah really good yeah yeah i haven't told you any plot but that's, that's all right <laughs> What about you? Um, oh yeah, so next up I read, uh, so I think I've talked about this one as well previously. So this is Let's Go Play at the Adamses, um, and this is by, I always forget his name, Mendel W. Johnson. I think you just said you were going to read it, I don't think you've talked about oh, okay. finishing reading it. Um, so, let's get into it. I This is a Paperbacks from Hell, it's got an introduction by Grady Hendrix, it's a sort of mid-70s um, horror novel uh, about a group of children who um, decide to kind of abduct, abduct uh, like uh, tie up uh, the babysitter of the Adamses, who is looking after them while their parents are away. And it sort of progressively gets darker and more psychologically harrowing as they keep the babysitter tied up for longer and longer. Um, I was expecting a sort of trashy and uh, disturbing uh, kind of tale, like a slightly, um, I don't know, like it didn't actually um, show a lot of graphic um, scenes. It, uh, it was largely psychological and um, in that sense was um, harrowing in a whole other way than I expected and yeah. it, it actually much I don't want to say classier, but much more um, layered um, than I thought. And I guess the impression of these is that they're kind of, in the way they look, they're like trashy, pulpy yeah. books, aren't they? Yeah. But it, yeah. I guess you're saying that's not no. necessarily what it I is. Felt, I felt like the writing was really good. Um, I felt like it was very slow moving, so it wasn't like cheap sort of uh, kicks sort of novel. Um, and by the end, I felt it almost sort of reached this kind of... Um, almost like cosmic levels of um of psychological horror um which i was not expecting and i thought this was amazing like i don't think i've ever had uh, a, as visceral an experience reading a book as this i felt like i was there i felt like um it was really affecting me like mind and body as i was reading it you had some bad dreams i had you? bad dreams <laughs> i felt like it was really um he really went there he dared to go into the psychological place of it rather than just show the sort of physical uh, torture that was going on. Um, and in doing so, I think he um, has created something that you can never really forget once you've read it. 
Um, so yeah, not uh, something I would advise everyone to read. It obviously has lots of trigger warnings for uh, violence, sexual abuse, rape. But yeah, I think it took a very clear-eyed kind of writer to actually really go there. And I felt like I'd been through almost like a religious experience through the end. It felt like sort of going through something very harrowing and coming out changed. So, yeah, um, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It, it sounds amazing. Yeah. And equally, I don't want to read it. Yeah, so I'm just the... completely <laughs> understandable. Yeah, I can see that. Completely. I gave it five stars. Um, yeah, it's going to really stay with me, I think. Um, did Grady Hendrix do a good intro as well? The, the intro is really interesting, fascinating um, insight into the writer, um, which... I, I read after reading the book, which I think you should always do. Mm-hmm. There are um, plot spoilers yeah. in the intro, so don't read the intro first. Um, but it will add a, a certain slant to the book once you have read it. I really like Grady Hendrix. Yeah, he, he writes really well in that. I think I he's really interesting. Novels, but... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, so some of mine are kind of horror-y with, yeah, and... October. october yeah. spookiness. Yeah. So I read The Good House by Tanana Reef Dew, um... Which I was very much looking forward to. It's a whopper. Yeah, it was. I found it too long. Yeah. But I think that is my uh, my main thing. I just had something at the back here as well. And the acknowledgements. Yeah, yeah. I feel so. Mm. So I found it a bit too long. I feel well, that. Well, the acknowledgements the best bit. <laughs> I feel that. Um, I read it sort of at the beginning of October, and I feel like with distance, I appreciate it more, mm. and I appreciate what she was doing and what she was trying to do, because um, she's a a black American writer kind of writing, um, I guess, kind of quite a typical um, horror story. Yeah, like uh, a traditional but, horror with black characters. Yes, yeah. which is, so that thing, of, you don't have that, so she's yeah. doing that. So, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Kind of revolutionary in itself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I think that, um, I guess, the stuff that she was doing in it is quite, yeah, it's all, in theory, I felt really, really interesting and really um important yeah. as well and she because she's a professor um of like film i think and we've watched that film yeah. the video she did yeah, talking great. about black horror yeah and um you know she's made she talked really interestingly about the links of trauma and horror and i'm really fascinated by her and i think yeah maybe other books really, might be worth yeah, exploring really interesting and i know that lots of people i saw that george Elaine and alex both really enjoyed it yeah so i think it could be something that you'd really enjoy I just found in the end that the ex- actual experience of reading it, I think I started liking it and I kind of, I don't know if it was just a little bit too long. And Maybe and in that sense of it is typical horror, it felt like. Yeah. Is it like when you read that Stephen Chbosky one and you sort of said how it just felt like a rewriting of Stephen King? But it does feel very Stephen King yeah. as well, but it's like, but it's better than Chbosky. But it, it's definitely better written than Chbosky, yeah. but also it's better in that sense of uh, she's obviously writing it with the purpose of having a black horror as well yeah Yeah. she did say yeah the thing i tagged in the acknowledgements was um i intended the good house to be a story about the consequences of abusing magic and i wanted to base that magical system within black traditions which is why i chose voodoo but this is not a voodoo book anyone who's curious about voodoo and other african-based religions in that true form should read works of non-fiction as i did and then she kind of lists them as well so i kind of felt like there was like really important stuff in there and i think the um I think stuff about like violence against black people as well is kind of covered in this as well. Yeah, it's just kind of washed over in other horror usually. Isn't yeah, it? so um, and it deals with racism in a kind of small town as well. Yeah, there you go. I mm. think that if it if it's something that you would be interested in, I think it is definitely worth reading. Um, I, I in the end, I just found it kind of yeah. an, an okay book yeah. sort of reading experience without no, the outside. But put me off reading it. Have I? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you were going to read it anyway. To read anyway. It's, yeah. it's just a bit too long, yeah. and I found I did find the ending a little bit disappointing as well. Right. Yeah. Blah. What next? <laughs> do you want to do yours? Then? Well, you've read more. Than okay, me, briefly, you? Trick or Treat by uh, Lisa Morton, which is a history of Halloween. I'm unsure how Lisa Morton managed to make something as fascinating as Halloween so dull. Right. She seems to have written quite a few books in some similar sort of subjects yeah. as well, hasn't she? Yeah, oh, she, so she did the intro to that, wasn't it the, the women in horror book you mentioned, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Was it the Victorian? Yeah, one, and she's yeah. got a book, new book out about seances, which I'm, I was really interested in. But I just found the writing style just really dry. Um, and it was very much a... So it's very much a straight traditional history of something. 
Um, and then I guess it didn't have options to delve into anything. So she kind of briefly mentions um, like uh, queerness and sort of Halloween. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting and mm. didn't go anywhere with it. Yeah. Briefly mentions kind of... Uh, the whole book in itself. Yeah, really. so that's why I felt. Briefly mentioned sort of um, race and Halloween as well. Yeah. And kind of, but didn't go into that. Yeah. 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 So maybe it was just too much. Yeah, and you tend to like books which sort of are part, mix it up, memoir, essay, yeah. history, all yeah. together, don't you? So it's very much that traditional history, which I'm not as into. Yeah. It's not as fun a reading experience. Um, and I think... Is that post? Oh, I think I kind of, um, as someone who'd read some of the books about history of Halloween, I think I kind of knew a lot of the sort of basic yeah. stuff anyway. Next up, in the month of October, I read... Twins by Caroline B. Cooney. This is a point horror. Um, I really didn't read much or any point horror in my teens, <laughs> as far as I can remember. I might have done. Um, uh, and I'm really loving exploring them now in my life. Excuse the beeps. Mm, point horror. Point horror, mm. yeah. So yeah, and twins are um, an excellent thing to read about. Uh, this was about Mary Lee and Madrigal. They're identical twins. Um, uh, they're exactly alike in every way, it says on the back. Um, but they're not really, because um, one is of them... Is one evil? Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, so yeah, Mary Lee is getting sent to boarding school because the parents are worried that the twins are getting too close in terms of they can't really sort of function without the other one. They are basically... Um, like one in the same um, and they're breaking them up and that seems cruel yeah it does seem cruel <laughs> it does seem cruel um, Mary Lee is kind of like why you do this to me no oh, she is uh, she, she to be like your dad <laughs> why you do this to me and Madrigal is kind of like yeah. yeah and like Mary Lee's like shocked that her sister's fine Magical. with this because yeah because how can you be fine with like you know, leaving a part of yourself behind. Yeah. So um, she goes off to boarding school, has a really bad time. Um, Madrigal goes to visit and something, an incident happens. It was very good. Um, yeah, I, I've read quite a few of these Caroline B. Cooney ones at this point. This was sent to me by my friend Becca from Carlisle. Um, I don't know if she's watching, but thanks, Becca. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, I'm going to keep reading these. Um well into my old age, um, because Aww. because they're very good. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed this one. Um, it's one of the upper tier, not top tier, but upper tier point horrors that I've read. Cool. Good Halloween read. I read Sea Witch by Moss Angel Witch Monster, which Jessica kindly sent me because I think she bought it for herself and then decided it wasn't for her. Um, I was really interested in reading it because both the wonderful... Anna Marie and Amanda from um, Actual Spinster and Butch Poetics have both said how much they like this book. Yeah, and um, you loved it too. I loved it, yeah. yeah. It's like one of those ones that's a little bit difficult to sort of describe. Um, it says it's a genre-phobic novel in fragments of contemporary tra transsexuality that focus on the life of a girl monster named Sarah who lives inside a witch god named Sea Witch. So, you know... I'm liking how it looks like a 90s kind of zine as well. Yeah. Yeah. And the sort of stuff inside. Yeah. I yeah. really loved it. I had that kind of um, writing I really was really into. Yeah. I, I loved it. It has like a little introduction, little cast of characters at the Lots front as well. Um, like Less Held Witch, Learned About Ghosts, Super Crushing on Glass Witch, She, Her. Strawberry Witch. Yeah, with Strawberry Witch. Strawberry Witch, super cute, keeps her seeds on the outside, tried camming for a while, but wasn't very good at it, has creepy dreams. Last I heard she bought a van and was living in it, she, her. So I just really loved it. I thought it was great. I gave it five stars. Um, I'm definitely, there's more of them, so I definitely want to um, get the next ones as oh, well. Oh, in, in the same series? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. And it just had that kind of really interesting, I just loved the writing. It's love very the writing. Year, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it just felt like my kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So... Lovely. Thank you so much, Jessica, for sending it on, and I loved it. Thank you. Oh, okay. On to... Oh, no, actually, no. my next one was one that I've taken back to the library, which is Still Alice by Lisa Genova. Oh. <laughs> um, this was one that um, I kind of mentioned before about how um, I often have issue with how uh, dementia and Alzheimer's is kind of 
um, talked about in novels. Yeah. And I was really interested in reading this one because it's one that's recommended by... Um, there's a there's like a, a thing here called something like Reading Well, which is um, like doctors and health professionals will recommend books that go with um, illnesses or, you know, whatever yeah. things might Conditions. happen. Yeah. yeah, so it's on that list. So I thought it's going to be quite a good representation. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a film as well. Yes. And and it, what, it was an amazing representation, I thought. It's told from the point of view of Alice who and find out that she has early onset dementia, so she's kind of 50 when it happens. Um, and it just, I just thought, yeah, I just thought in the sense of understanding a little bit about dementia, writing about something really sensitively, um, but not really shying away from stuff, I thought it did an, like an amazing job. So I do, I know that it's not something you, you might not want to read it right now, or mm -hmm. but um, yeah. Considering how many books you've read that have dealt with it. Yeah, yeah, it was it was dealt with so well. It's very much the book is just about that, mm -hmm. really. I mean, mm -hmm. Alice is a kind of lecturer, and, and then didn't she you say realized... she seems is it Lisa Genoa? Is she, didn't you say she seems to just write about? Yeah, where she so looks was... at different um, conditions. Yeah, and I was talk and... talking to um, Sarah from um, You're Too Sharp about it, and I hadn't really looked at other books, but Sarah mentioned that she does all her other books are kind of about other neurological conditions, and I had a look, and they are, and I just think that's you know if that. It felt like it's more about getting that message across rather than writing great literature. Yeah. But it was still... Pay so it's not like my kind of novel, mm -hmm. but it was still really compelling to read and really yeah. page turnery. And I would highly recommend it. So, That's good. It's a yeah. good, perfect library book. Yeah. yeah. And she's got a... So she, yeah, she's written lots of books, like you said, mm -hmm. about different conditions, but also has a non-fiction book coming out soon about memory. Um, okay. So that, that looks really interesting as well. Yeah. 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 Nice. So that was good. Uh, shall I go? Yeah. Or do you want me to do another you one? You do another one. Okay. Um, I read The Caro Haunt by Darcy Coates. Mm -hmm. I've said before, love a bit of Darcy Coates. Um, they're kind of trashy, but they're fun and they work. Yeah. This one didn't work, though. Mm. I was like, yeah, this one didn't <laughs> work for me. And I'm not really sure it has the magic gone. So it's like about a, a tour guide of this haunted house and then... Um, la 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 they all decide to go and stay in this haunted house quite a similar ending to um good house no, right. actually which is spoilers if you've read one yeah. or the other of them um yeah no tension no scariness didn't really like this one. Oh, that's a shame i'm gonna keep going with darcy yeah maybe i was in the wrong mood or something but maybe i think you did um hit a wall with the scary halloween reads, well i think you? i just read a few that i just felt were okay yeah and so it did to you yeah, yeah. So, meh. That's a shame. Yeah. Um, okay, I read um, Merciless Book One by Danielle Baker. Um, I buddy read this with Shona, uh, Shonarella on Instagram. <laughs> um, it's our first buddy read together and it was super fun. Um, yeah, it's a young adult. It's kind of witchy. It's <laughs> um, pretty wild. Um, yeah, it's about a... Um, Group, a, new, a girl that's new in new in school, kind of high school in America, and she meets this group of girls who kind of almost like Heather's like, and they sort of welcome her into their little group, and um, and then they start torturing someone. <laughs> <laughs> More torture for me this month, um, and it's pretty gruesome for a young adult book. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It, I felt like it, whilst it was super fun and sort of, you know, graphic and almost sort of uh, cartoony in its violence, um, I thought the writing was fine. I thought it was very sort of uh, tropey in that sort of, uh, I don't know, like the craft kind of, uh, you know, sort of teen horror kind of way. I liked that. It reminded me a little bit of Foul is Fair uh, by Hannah Kippen, I think, um, in that sort of... Uh, almost like amoral kind of yeah. writing, which I which I kind of can really like, I think. I, I dig it. Um, uh, yeah, structurally, it was a very odd <laughs> book. It literally uh, has a few sort of s scenes and you sort of roll in along quite nicely, reading it, thinking, okay, high school, hanging out with friends, house. Um, and then it has this one scene kind of quite early on and it just keeps going. Um, to the point where the st structure then becomes this, this this scene which felt like just another scene actually extends pretty much the whole rest of the book which is a strange 
um, decision. Um, uh, I'm not sure how how much thought went into the structure. Yeah, I of feel the book, maybe there wasn't. It was accidental. <laughs> um, it just didn't fe really feel like this was how it was going to go. And because the chapters are quite short, whilst I like a chapter and a short chapter especially, they were completely unnecessary in that they <laughs> literally just carried on from the last sentence of the. Yeah. yeah so like, my favourite chapter break um, was uh, so chapter whatever ends with. She must hear me walking down the stairs because she glances up from Brooklyn's body. I don't know if this is a spoiler. Uh, you, you know, you probably won't remember this <laughs> if, you, if you ever get to reading it. I think she's dead, Grace says. Next chapter. She's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the tension is like, you know, really held there for that page turn. Uh, so yeah, this is, yeah. It was fun, trashy, violent. Um, young adult, it was everything I wanted it to be, basically. Um, would definitely carry on reading uh, book two, Shona. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next time, October. <laughs> yeah. uh, I read Baby Teeth by Zoe J. Stage. Mm -hmm. These are in order if we read them. I don't know if we ever said that, but... Yeah, know. this is the order we read them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, yeah, Baby Teeth, Zoe J. Stage. I've heard lots of good things about this one. Uh, Kat really liked it. I think Jordaline really liked it as well. I want to read it. Okay. Still, despite. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get on with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just thought it was okay. Um, it's like a, it's a creepy kid and her mum, and it's told from alternate. So it's the kid talks and then the mum talks kind of thing. So alternate chapters, and um, the mum and the kid are kind of at home. The child, I can't remember how old she is. She's maybe oh, she's seven. Um, she doesn't speak, although she can speak. Um, and the dad is at work, and the dad and the child like really get on and the dad thinks the girl's like adorable and perfect yeah. but when the mum and the girl are alone the girl is just like horrible and kind of and then when you hear stuff from her point of view it's just like she wants to kill the mum and just be with the dad mm. kind of thing mm. um and I think it started I was quite enjoying it but I didn't really feel it like I didn't mm. feel that it was I didn't feel it was truth <laughs> which I not that you can't be a yeah. creepy kid, but I just felt like it, it just didn't feel convincing. It didn't, it it didn't yeah. feel convincing. There's so, a... um, like, I felt like either for me, it needed to be creepier. Yeah. Um, or maybe, I don't know. It just, I was just a bit underwhelmed by it. It's quite fast paced, maybe. It's quite far, fast paced. But, yeah, but I felt like, again, it was like, it was too long as well, even though mm. it's not like super long. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested in if you read it and mm. see what you yeah, think. Yeah, I do want but to read it. It was a bit was a bit underwhelmed like it says i didn't feel it was nasty enough that was mm. that's my thing or right. i didn't feel it was creepy either right. could have you been... would if it happened to you <laughs> could have been creepier could have been creepier is my thing chpc mm. do you want to keep going okay this is when you had a break from yeah scary. i think it was yeah. because i read like yeah. so i read like those Four. Yeah. Thought they were all just okay. Yeah. And then I think I gave up reading at this point. Yeah. And I advised you days. to not carry on reading horror books. I took a break from horror. Yeah. So um, I went to this, which I've been reading for ages, and I just finally finished it, which is The Science of Meditation, How to Change Your Brain, Mind, and Body. It's a bit, bit of a jump, isn't it? From... <laughs> It's what you needed. Yeah. yeah. By Daniel Goleman and Richard J. Davidson. Daniel Goleman wrote those books like um, Emotional Intelligence, which were kind of huge quite a few years ago. Um, I wasn't sure about this book going in because it kind of felt like, you know, it said it's the first truly expert book on meditation. And I felt it was a bit like, oh, two white guys kind of coming in. Yeah. Um, but it was great. And the two white guys, <laughs> they are two white guys, but they're kind of, um, I guess they're probably in their 60s or 70s now, but they'd very much had this whole like from college that sort of um you know a bit like that harvard timothy leary kind of like they're kind of hippie college yeah. um and then they went and did meditation quite early on so they were very much steeped in it themselves yeah. which i i was worried that it was just going to be that you know yeah looking at it without really yeah, yeah. understanding yeah. it so they very much had their own understanding their own practice um and then the way that they talked about, I think maybe it was to like push to sell it in this way. Yeah, maybe. but they do, but they were doing, they were very scientific in how they talked about it. So when they talked about, so often in meditation books you just get stuff saying it makes you calmer, it, it reduces yeah. your blood pressure, you know that yeah. stuff like that. But they very much went for, um, oh, does it really? Because um, there's studies done here, but it didn't have a, um, what do you call it, a control. Yeah. So you know it was it was very it was very analytical and very science based. Yeah. So it might be um, 
a bit much if you've never read anything about meditation, but it was really fascinating. And yeah, um, yeah and a good more. tool to have for people that are kind of like, there's no science there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, I read The Fisherman by John Langham. Langham? Langham. Um, this is a beautiful book, isn't it? So this is on Word Horde Publishers, who I've sort of since had a look at. And they seem to have quite a few um, interesting looking mostly sort of horror titles in their range. Um, this is about a, uh, a guy who is uh, a widow, widower, um, and he's lost his uh, wife, and he is grieving, obviously. He takes up uh, fishing, which he's never really sort of done before, but he's sort of um, steeped in grief, and uh, he becomes friends with someone from his workplace who also um, has lost his wife um, and family in a car accident and they start fishing together and it's very much about these two guys that um, have this kind of bond but it's that kind of quite sort of masculine kind of lots unspoken um, lots um, explored while sitting in silence together fishing um, and it's that tale and it turns into a Lovecraftian cosmic horror tale about the vast sea and sea creatures and wow. um, what lies sea creatures. yeah what lies beneath the surface of our reality. I think I want to read this. Thing. It's a fabulous book. I loved the writing. I thought it was very um, masterfully told um, and crafted. Um, structure is interesting um, in that it has a whole middle section which kind of um, adds more and more depth to the present day storyline. Um, and yeah, it's just a, it works as a, a horror novel, as like a cosmic horror, um, as well as a sort of exploration of um, the wrenching kind of grief and um, loss uh, in a very real earthly way um, mm -hmm. that it explores. So yeah, I just thought this really, really worked for me. Uh, I gave it four stars. I would absolutely read more books by John Langham. Um, and yeah, yeah, so a really good find. I would recommend it, um, even if horror isn't your go-to sort of genre. I feel like there's enough literary substance and uh, like depth and uh, pace, slow pace to sort of really draw you in whatever kind of books you would read. And yeah. I think you should read it. Yeah, I read that yeah. yeah. Um, I got quite emotional. Yeah, you were quite I? sad. Reading yeah, it. there has some sort of bits that really sort of got me in my chest. So Aww. yeah, I would highly recommend it. it was, it's a great book, and he's a great writer. I read Writers and Lovers by yeah. Lily King. I love this one. Okay. It was a five star read for me, and this one made me cry as well. Not for any reason that there was in the book. I was right. just like quite overwhelmed by how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in lockdown. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so it's like a um, novel about like a girl. She's a girl. She's like in her early 30s, and she's trying to write a novel, but she's got like loads of debt, and her mother's just died, and she's a waitress. Um, and then, her, oh, She's just broken up with a guy as well. So it's all kind of stuff that's like, that kind of, there's yeah, a lot going on. Kind of <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on. And then she kind of, um, there's like, she meets two different guys and it's kind of about, um, you know, maybe dating those guys as well. So it's quite sort of simple in that sense. Did I say it was set in the 90s? Oh, it's set no, in the yeah. 90s, yeah. late 90s. Um, and it's kind of, yeah, mainly about her, lots about her writing and there's that kind of loneliness and she's obviously kind of, struggling um but i just love the writing i thought it was amazing probably one of my favorite kind of um novels of the year really really liked it it just kind of clicked with me you know that yeah yeah which is after reading lots of books that don't yeah that's probably why i cried yeah. <laughs> yeah because none of you know i mean the darcy coats wasn't very good but the yeah. other ones were still good but i yeah. i just wasn't clicking yeah. with them and then when it was like a relief to have something that really spoke yeah. to me it yeah. was just like that's yeah. amazing that's so, so good i'm so glad yeah uh, yeah can we do another one do another one and then following on from that another clicking is um this little book by eileen miles and it's called for now and it's in the 
why I write series, and I've got two of the others which yeah. have like Patty Smith and Knife Scar. Yes, it's just like they're just bringing out ones that all of your favorites. All of my I favorites. Um, I love Eileen Miles. I think um, their writing is amazing, and that's another thing as well. I think I was reading books that the writing was fine, but then I read something where the writing was just like yeah. like something else. Yeah. Like I don't find Eileen Miles that easy to read sometimes, but I just think the writing is. Yeah. Yeah. So I love this one. It's kind of about them doing a. Um, I think they're kind of. It's it's like a talk they're preparing really. And that, oh, is it? Okay. Talk. And it's also about um, their. Um, they've got like notebooks and stuff, and I think they've lost the notebooks and trying to find these notebooks. I just thought it was amazing. I really loved it. I did tag stuff that thing. Loved Miles for years. I've loved everything that Eileen Miles writes, even if I kind of think they're not always. Um, they're not. They're not always perfect yeah. for me. They're just always fascinating. Have you read any of the poetry? Um, we not, should get no. some of the, Well, yeah. there's a newish book out, um, which is Poetry and Essays, which I'm oh, really okay. interested in. So maybe I'll get that one. Um, I like this bit, which I think is relevant for all of us who read. Um, it says, What I wonder a lot is why everyone who reads doesn't start writing at some point. It just seems like the obvious nervous response. They all want to. Many do. It's talking about... Someone has asked them to write a, a like a review or a blurb for a book, and it's about Carson McCullough. So I think it's that Jen Chaplin book. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. They in fact researching the writer Carson McCullough. So the writer of the galley is a lesbian, and she believes Carson McCullough is also one. So she she has been reading her letters and transcriptions of her therapy sessions and pieces of a mostly redacted memoir, all in search of the evidence that Carson McCullough is in fact a lesbian. That wouldn't be a problem with me. I'm so obviously a lesbian. I don't even call myself a lesbian anymore. I say queer or trans. I say they, but none of that matters. There's just no sexual mystery. So, yeah. I love that. I really like the bit of, um, I'm so obviously a lesbian. I don't even call myself a lesbian. <laughs> um, but I'm really interested in that, just banging on, but I'm really interested in that kind of, because it's only the last couple of books that Ali and Miles' pronouns have, uh, are, are they. Mm. Um, and they were like she and her before and obviously they referenced it there um, but I'm really interested in that thing of how a lot of writers maybe who are because they're coming up to 70 I think yeah how th there wasn't that language yeah which they, when they, they were... would have used if yeah. they had it been available yeah yeah and um, Michelle T talked about that in when I went to hear her read and yeah she talked about lots of um kind of these this gang of women I forgot what they were called in San Francisco oh, about how a lot of them would have Maybe identified as trans, yeah. but or they or yeah. um, but didn't have that language. I just yeah. think that's. I just find it interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I love Eileen Miles. Yeah. Um. Lastly, for October, <laughs> I read. <laughs> well, let me give you some context for this. I um, and this is from the library, but I spent much of October, um, working on the. Bert's favourite horror films of each decade. Yeah, very popular. Series. series. More for myself <laughs> than... Um, but um, I felt like, okay, I need to do the research here. And I felt like one area that I um, was underprepared for was the 80s slasher, which I've sort of recently, in the last maybe three or four years, gotten into. But I don't have, like, a... I never grew up watching it. So I felt like this was the time, this was the month to explore the slasher. And um, I got this book out, Teenage Wasteland, the slasher movie Uncut by J.A. Kurswell, um, in order to support my journey um, through the, the world of the slasher. Um, I discovered there are loads of films uh, uploaded on YouTube, um, some of the lesser known 80s slashers and 70s horror. And there's some, I've got a list of hundreds now of films to watch um, as well as the Netflix world um, to watch so um, films were a large part of my October which is why I read a bit less um, I was watching several films a day <laughs> um, pr pretty much none of which made my list <laughs> but it felt like I had some grounding um, and I, this book was um, thoroughly entertaining so it's you know there's not much writing but I sort of read it from beginning to end it's kind of lots of posters from around the world and it sort of uh, explains the origins of the slasher from um, like, you know, Psycho and the Italian Giallos to the 
um, is it the German um, Krimis, I think they're called. Sort of, um, German Krimis? Yeah, I think they're German. The Krimis that were largely um, films that were made based on Edgar Wallace stories, which became a huge phenomenon. Why are they called Krimis? Because um, they're c criminals. Yeah, they're just pathetic. Like, <laughs> let's have a look. Yeah, the German oh, Krimi. K-R-I-M-I. -I. Yeah. Um, which went on to influence the uh, slasher and how, you know, Halloween changed and uh, changed the face of horror and um, started off the big slasher boom of the early 80s. Um, so this was a really fun read to read alongside. It's, you know, it's not massively in depth, but for me, it was, um, I learned about lots of films which I had to write down and search for and I hadn't heard of. And it gives a sort of really good, uh, you know, beginner's overview of the genre. Um, yeah, nothing special, but a thoroughly uh, informative and entertaining, and I, I enjoyed it. It's from Bristol. Yay! Yeah. And then my last one, the last one. The last one. Is Pine by Francine Toon. Um, I wanted to read this one because it's sort of set around Halloween, which I thought would be nice. Um, I found this one okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, it does have quite nice settings. It's in Scotland and it's kind of quite remote sort of village. There's lots mm -hmm. of forests around them. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a girl who lives with her dad. The dad, um, their mum, the mum has disappeared kind of about good ten years pre. Oh, you know, good few years previously. And um, they don't, they think she's just left. They don't really know what happened to her. And the dad has kind of not coped well with that. Um, I found the characters were a bit thin. I didn't, you know, I found the dad kind of hard work. Um, Dad's always hard. Yeah, and it has this sort of um, almost like a little bit of a supernatural feel to it, um, and also like a a kind of there's a crime as as well, so someone goes missing, I think. Um, and yeah, it was it was just all right, really. I, would, I enjoyed it enough to to get through it. It was very, it was very readable, um, and I like the kind of there's like some tarot in it and kind oh, of yeah. salt lamps and crystals mm. and. Yeah. Um, the mum who's disappeared is kind of quite, you know, hippie-ish. Mm. I like that. Yeah, Francine but... Toon is a good Scottish name. Yeah. yeah. Does it's... anyone know about the um, Bloody Scotland Crime oh. uh, Award? Because that sounds pretty exciting. Shortlisted for yeah. the Bloody Scotland Crime Debut of the Year. It also, The Guardian says it's a literary gothic thriller to chill the marrow. And I think that's... A fair point, maybe yeah. just over overstretched. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of quite gothic -y. Yeah. Didn't really chill yeah. me. Yeah. I was not chilled once. Are you glad the uh, horror reading uh, of October is over for you? Oh, well, no. I mean, I want to read horror mm. and I've enjoyed some, but I just didn't really enjoy the ones I read this yeah. this month, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, I nearly put this, I did put this down initially because I there was like a few descriptions <laughs> Which I've obviously I did in some other video where I complained about the descriptions of colour. Mm. Mm. They had like hair the colour in like a few pages. Mm. There was someone was wearing frost coloured shorts, which was just like I hate those ones where you're just like out going. What does what is frost coloured shorts? Nothing. Is it white shorts? In which case, say white. Mm. It's blue. See through. See through. Yeah. So there was frost coloured shorts. Then there was hair colour hair the colour of cornflakes. <laughs> Which at least made sense. Yeah. Then there was also hair the colour of school shoes. Yeah. And that one is just like, just, that mean, I don't know. It takes you out of the story because. They all took me out of the story. It's all about the writer trying to be fancy, isn't and it? And also, they, because those three were over like two pages. Mm. And then I'm, I think there was less of the more I got used to it, but they bothered me. Um, but yeah, it was uh, totally readable and kind of, if you're looking for something that's kind of, you don't have to put too much energy into and you want that kind of. A little bit of a crime, supernatural. Yeah. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was October. Well done. That's... We read quite a lot. You read quite a lot. Um, yeah. How was everyone's October reading? Um, how's your November going? Yeah. How's your November going? Going good. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. This is Yanni. This is Bertie. And we are... <laughs> A story time. A story time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>